thanks for coming even though it's very cold outside thanks for coming um, yeah we we're going to see today Isaiah how he pointing out the gospel of Jesus Christ in Isaiah so we're going to see that scripture Isaiah 49 9 to 10 before we going in a word let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you for this word that you have given us today and you have spoke to Isaiah in Old Testament and you have showed him, you have told him the prophecies of your, you are the Messiah and you are the, you are the one who's, uh, who's in the light of the world and uh, you are the Savior. And we pray that everyone in Israel today, they will see because they read the Isaiah and let the Lord God open their eyes and uh, see that Jesus is the Messiah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's see the Isaiah 49, 9. I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom. And to those in darkness, come into the light. They will be my sheep, grazing in green pasture. And on hills that, will, that were previously bare. He was saying that, I will say to the prisoners, come out in freedom. Jesus came, he is, uh, God is speaking to Isaiah here and prophesizing over the Israel and Israel people that they, he's saying that come out from the prisoners because the Israel is keep going to their old ways, old ways. And uh, God is speaking through the Isaiah, come out, come out from your prison uh, to the freedom because to the those in darkness come out to the light into the light they will be my sheep grazing in a green pasture who's our shepherd we all know Jesus Christ uh, he's our shepherd and uh, he's saying that they will be my sheep and grazing in green pasture he will lay them in a green pasture and on hills that were previously bare there was there was nothing but he said, I am going to be your shepherd and you will be my sheep in this scripture. So Jesus, there is a, there is a Isaiah pointing out that to the Jesus. And uh, in Psalm 23, we say the Lord is my shepherd. So in even the uh, King David, he's pointing out to Jesus. And, and as we know that Isaiah and the, and the Psalms, they've been read by the uh, Israel Jewish people a lot they they know more you know they more read the Old Testament of course the Torah five chapter but most they reading the Psalms as well so 23 Psalm they knows Isaiah they knows and all this Isaiah when God prophesizing to the Israel they knows that Jesus but whenever we go to preach the gospel in Israel I remember I went to Pastor Paul with Pastor Paul one day to preach the gospel and there was a street uh, there was very less people on a street and we just got our mic ready we started to preach I started to preach on the mic and the one uh, one couple came and they said to me are you preaching about Jesus I said and there was Jewish people and I said yes then they said to me do you know you can be stoned here it's very dangerous area and there was police cars was going and whenever they goes we were still preaching but but in very uh, uh, volume was a bit low so they're not gonna stop us because of the noise or, or voice so but then she said to me or oh, her husband said to us you know like you can be get stoned and it's very danger area why are you doing that late evening you know late dark evening why are you doing that and I and that guy was so angry I thought he's gonna punch me before he say anything that he was angry because when he heard Jesus he was got so angry and I just I just stepped back a little bit because I know he's is gonna do something all I said to them both of you know why we are doing this because Jesus loves you as soon as I said Jesus loves you that that anger or something is happened to them and there was speaking very politely after that when when they heard that Jesus loves you that's why we are here <coughs> and uh, the Holy Spirit touched them by the you know whenever that's what I one thing I noticed whenever we preach the gospel 
we want to preach with the love of Christ. No matter how much people get uh, upset on us, you know, they don't believe. Muslim doesn't believe, Hindu doesn't believe, Jewish doesn't believe. It's okay because their eyes are closed. And thank God, God is chose us to in this time to preach the gospel. And if somebody is angry, just tell them, we love you. You know, Jesus loves you. Even though you are angry, you are shouting on us, you are mocking us. Um, some guys are doing behaving bad to us, especially for the women as well. We still love them because Jesus loves them. And when we came across with the love of Christ, how we preach the gospel, I'm sure they will be changed their heart as well. And Revelation chapter 6, verse 16 to 17 says, it's the same scripture, but in Revelation also, in uh, John, he also uh, prophesied, or he also had a revelation on this one, what Isaiah said, exactly what he says as well, 7 chapter 16. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be soaked by the heat of the sun, for the Lamb of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them spring of the living water, giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Today, when we look in the situation in Israel, we see the captives, what's happening, war, captives, people are captive, been captives, 240 or 220, they've been killed, they've been raped, they've been beheaded, they've been slaughtered, they've been, uh, they've been uh, the, so much in the news. So this is like a prison. It's a more bad, worse than prison. War is a more worse than prison. At least in a prison when person goes, at least they have a little bit dignity there. They, they have some respect a little bit. But in a war, what the Hamas is doing is just going to that limit, you know. Exactly what the, the Bible says, uh, John chapter 10, 10, kill, steal, and destroy. Exactly they are doing that. There is no no um, sympathy, no uh, nothing for in their heart. It's just a killing. So at the moment, what we've seen in Israel, they're going through that prison, prison uh, sort of uh, uh, situation. Yeah. Even the Palestine, we're talking about Israel, but the Palestine, there is no water, no electricity, and uh, war is there, and uh, they have a children as well. We we have a love for them as well. It's not like we don't have love for the Palestinians. We love Muslim. We love Palestinians. Um, but the, word, the Lord is saying exactly here, who is a prisoner, come to me. Even in Isaiah said, in the Revelation, the same thing, come to me. Because the Jesus is the light of the world. Unless in Israel they accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior and the Messiah, if they believe the Prince of Peace, in their in their uh, in their nation, there will be peace. Even though whatever <coughs> they're trying to do, the peace agreement with the other nations is going to be on a paper only. It's not going to be forever. It's not going to be there unless they 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 <coughs> accept Jesus Christ. You know, so this is going to be on a piece of paper. Even though they try to do the peace agreement, maybe after this war or something. Uh, you know, some uh, countries may come and help them for the peace, and I don't know after that what gonna happen is we will see third temple antichrist just because he bring the peace in that situation. We see because we are really in end time. Also, you know, in um, Exodus chapter thirty-two six, when we see that. Exodus chapter 32, verse 6. I'm just trying to get this uh, little bit of picture from the Old Testament, what happened and what happening now. I, uh, we go one, one verse a little bit, uh, uh, start from 5. Yeah? Aaron saw how excited the people were, so he built an altar in the front of calf. Then he announced, tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning and to sacrifice burnt offering and peace offering. 
After this, they celebrated with the fasting and drinking and they engulfed in pagan revel, uh, revelry. Yeah, so this is what we see. There was uh, building a golden calf and, and uh, just uh, dancing and celebrating and uh, drinking and there was a lot of thing also was going on, sexual immoralities and everything. So God really didn't like it and he bring his judgment straight away on those people. Same when we see in the festival, when there was a festival in Israel, in a music, there was in a music festival, there was dancing. There was a lot of, there was doing drinking, there was a drug going on in that situation. There was celebrating. Um, and you know what, in that, in that uh, uh, place, they put a Buddha uh, uh, statue there. It's a big Buddha statue was there. And like, a, like on top of one of the building or one of the roof, there was a bu big Buddha statue. And these Israelites, all these youngsters, I don't know, they came from maybe different nation as well to celebrate that. So there was drinking, there was uh, doing so many things that God wasn't surely not pleased. And the judgment we see came upon them that time. Even though they don't know what they are doing, but uh, the God of uh, Israel, he bring the judgment because he said that, you know, there is no Baal before me, there is no God before me, all these, uh, all these sins he is not going to tolerate and there is going to be judgment and this is, we see, the like a holocaust and there was running for their life, all the youngster and there was been killed, many killed, many been captured that time. And this is what we see, the, the judgment of God. Of course, uh, there's a wrath of God came on that time as well because as we open the door for devil to come in, and he will come in. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, um, uh, they didn't know. They Of course they know. The, they know the Bible. And still they're doing it, you know. So this is what we... We just had to pray for those people today because it's a war is there. We have really sympathy for the Jewish people. Yesterday I was talking with uh, Brother Sidney and uh, his wife and uh, he was start again uh, tears in his eyes because in Russia we see one news uh, in an airport there was a, there was an aeroplane going to the Israel and there was a Jewish people in aeroplane. They're trying to get the Jewish people. You know, so that was really scary, and she was saying that they are scared to death. They are scared to their life now, to go out and uh, about. So it's really they are they are scared of that. Even though they are not in Israel, just imagine how people in Israel they're going through the all that fear. So we're going to see John chapter eight forty four. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. Yeah, He was a murderer from the beginning. He was always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is constant, consistent with, the, with his ca uh, characters, for he is a liar and father of lies. So we see the devil is like a father of lies. He's a, he's a he just tried to murder from the beginning. He is a murderer from the beginning. He was always hated the truth, truth which which is Jesus as well. He always hated Jesus. Wherever the Jesus name, he always come uh, come and hate those people. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he is constantly with his uh, character. For he is a liar and father of all lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe, which you, which of you truthfully accuse me of sin. And since I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe? This is what the Apostle Paul is saying. I am telling you the truth. Jesus is the truth. And if you don't believe, if you don't understand what, what the Apostle John is saying in this chapter, what, what is the devil? He, he literally describes 
his character of the devil, who he is, he is a liar, he is a murderer from the beginning, he is literally describing his character of devil. So we see in, in uh, Israel, in the, in the, uh, in the, when there is a celebrating of the festival, or in the, in the house, when they were having nice peaceful holidays, and they came and killed them. And we know with the innocent people, that babies and all that. So when, when this Israel, they have so much stiff neck, so much stubbornness. We love them so much from all our heart. But because of their stubbornness, uh, they sometimes, you know, come like this situation. If they surrender their life to Jesus, if they accept w w what we are talking about, you know. I, I went to India um, for uh, this year. I was praying for my sister eight years, when since uh, eight years I'm praying for her to receive Jesus Christ. And uh, when I, I was talking to her, she accepted Jesus Christ. She had a she had a sort of cancer in her body and I was praying me and my mom was praying for her and she got healed she came out from that but she still didn't believe the Jesus yeah she she think that okay you can pray but she will do her uh, Hinduism stuff as well <laughs> so she think that a Hindu God saved her from that and then she become so ill and I literally went for her because I prayed in the church and she got really healed as well. And then again, she thinks that the Hindu God has saved her. And uh, when I was, I said, okay, you know, now I'm give it to you in the, in the Lord's head. She accepted Jesus Christ. And when her daughter was listening, because my sister was very, very ill, and but my sister got little bit stubborn heart. She's really stubborn in that way. But her daughter, she accepted Jesus Christ. And... Um, five and a half year of her marriage she didn't have a baby and uh, she thought that her marriage is gone now that she is going to break because she, in India if you don't have a baby they they don't last long that marriage and also she doesn't have any marriage certificate uh, legally married so there was a sort of love marriage and my sister wasn't approved for that so anyway so when I went there uh, she said to me, I, I, I'm not happy with my marriage. I don't have a children. I don't have a, anything marriage, you know, legally uh, certificate, marriage certificate. So I said, okay, okay. Um, I don't know what to do. I said to her, do you want me to bring you in the UK? <laughs> so, but anyway, then when we st she was staying with me eight, eight days, my, my sister's daughter, and uh, I was praying with her. And I was praying, and she, uh, she got very innocent. She's only 33, but she got so innocent like a child, like a heart. She opened her heart for Jesus. She accepted Jesus Christ. Whenever we pray, she used to cry. She used to start it, seeing the vision even in a prayer. And she was saying to me, oh, I saw this. I said, oh, yes, the Lord literally going to touch you now, you know. And uh, when I was praying for her, I saw a little baby baby in her womb and I straight away after the prayer I said to her you know God Lord showed me that you're going to be a pregnant you're going to be pregnant I saw the baby in your womb and uh, I was quite shocked shocked as well and she was quite shocked because we wasn't sure she wanted to stay in this marriage or not and how she gonna stay she wasn't happy and all this is and when I left her, uh, India and she gave, she went to her husband's house and within a few days, a month or something, she messaged me. She said, I'm pregnant. And as soon as she got pregnant, within a one month, she got pregnant. And um, so they went for the test or something. So the doctor said, you know, how are you going to give babies? You need some legal uh, certificate of marriage. How are you going to do the?" So they had to put the name legally for the uh, marriage certificate, husband and wife. So even though that takes 21 days, three, four weeks in India to get the marriage certificate, she lives in a village area, not in a city. So it takes a little longer. But she, they both went in the morning and afternoon she got a marriage certificate on the same day. And then uh, she got pregnant, she got marriage certificate. And she said to me, you know what, when before she got pregnant, she felt the, the cramp and she had a dream that she's speaking in tongues. And that same morning, she felt it that she's she's got something happening in her 
in tummy like a pregnant she was oh and she believes Jesus so much means eight years I'm praying for my sister she didn't believe she didn't wanted to uh, appreciate what God is doing to her you know but my daughter my sister's daughter within uh, eight days she accepted Jesus Christ and Lord literally blessed her and that marriage is is she's okay in that marriage now so it's depend you know how people I accept how much they deeply they receive Jesus Christ if they just wanted to receive the blessing and also not appreciate not going it's like a ten ten uh, people God Jesus healed them and just one came return for the testimony and nine just they went is I think my my sister is one of that <laughs> she received the healing she received the miracles but there is no testimony but my daughter my sister's daughter within eight days she received everything five and a half that, this is her testimony I'm just saying that you know in Israel those those uh, Israelite people no matter how much we are praying 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 I think when the time comes they will be touched I just I just feel like that's gonna be a too late many people you know dying without Jesus and they're going in a hell and because of their stubbornness because of those nine people who didn't appreciate didn't come back to the testimony those sort of nine people I feel like they are Israelites now they Jewish I just hope they will come back to the Lord you know uh, yeah so this is what we are saying that the Lord uh, we only we know that Jesus is our Lord and we only bow down to our Jesus we only worship our God Jesus Christ of Nazareth the Yeshua Messiah there is no other God we bow down there is no other Baal there is no other cow there is no 33 anything millions of you know the fallen angels we never bow down to them but we bow down to our King of King Lord of Lords who is coming and uh, coming soon so let's pray for those Israel once again uh, because Isaiah very much mentioned here about the sheep and shepherd and the prisons and how to how to the get out from that but these people we just wants to pray for their heart be open today Heavenly Father we thank you for this word Lord we pray that every Jewish every people in Israel their heart be open for the gospel we know you have set up the timing for them Lord but before that many people are perishing We're, many people are going in hell without receiving you they're going in hell without knowing you Lord Father, we just pray this gospel, the Isaiah's gospel be reached to them. The, who, they will know, Lord, once you open their eyes, Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus upon all the Jewish and all the Israel and uh, uh, the Jerusalem, Lord, what's happening there. Let there be peace in the Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. God bless you.